The U.S. military is mistaken, has admitted it mistakenly killed a civilian in an airstrike in Syria last year. This comes after the man was first misidentified as a senior al-Qaeda leader. An investigation ordered by U.S. Central Command found several issues with the airstrike that need to be improved. But it didn't detail those issues in the report released today, noting that many facts about the investigation remain classified. The victim's family insisted he was not an al-Qaeda leader, but instead was a farmer and father of 10. The U.S. launched the investigation eight weeks ago. In other national headlines, we send it over to Alan Miller. Well, Monica, the Associated Press reports that more than 2,000 people have been arrested on college campuses during pro-Palestinian protests. The latest large-scale arrest took place at UCLA last night when more than 200 people were arrested. Police removed barricades and began dismantling demonstrators' fortified encampments after hundreds of protesters defied orders to leave. Protests have been taking place at dozens of college campuses since police cleared an encampment at Columbia University in mid-April. A fifth victim's body has been recovered at the site of the Baltimore Key Bridge collapse. Authorities say the body was found inside a red truck, one of the construction vehicles that had been missing since the bridge collapsed in March. Eight construction workers were working on the bridge when it collapsed early on March 26th. Four of the six bodies were previously found, while two other workers were able to escape. The International Olympic Committee today unveiled its largest refugee Olympic team to date for the Paris 2024 Games with 36 athletes from 11 countries, including Syria, Sudan, Iran, and Afghanistan. They will compete across 12 sports in Paris, the third time such a team has formed for the Summer Olympics. IOC's president says he hopes this will send a message of hope to the more than 100 million displaced people around the world. For the first time, the team will compete under its own emblem. And one of the stories we're working on for First News at 6, how one company is showing that being North Dakota proud can also be a fashion statement. Back to you, Monica.